think we have finally got all our body work done on our truck. And there was a lot of fucking body work to do. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. So what you're looking at, you're looking at our 1966 Chevy truck that we're doing an on-frame restoration on. This is a mild restoration. This isn't a concourse restoration. This isn't a off-frame rotisserie style restoration. This is a mild restoration, fixing minor rust repair. Uh, we replaced the top on it. Make sure you watch those videos if you have one of these trucks and the uh, front, uh, the front of your roof panel is rotted. My friend Pete's showing you how to fix it and do it right. But uh, if you look at the truck, you can see that I did not strip this truck to bare metal. And another thing that you noticed is I'm the only one here because everybody else hauled ass and scattered on me. They couldn't do the job and, uh, you know, left me with the bag of fucking eggs to put in the frying pan and cook. And that's basically what I did. Uh, the last time we saw this truck was three weeks ago, three and a half weeks ago, and uh, we are finally done with the bodywork three and a half weeks, almost a month later, and uh, all I got to do now is DA that section over there on that corner, and then up in the top here where you can see the orange, bright orange paint. But uh, I was telling you that we didn't strip it down. The reason we didn't strip that is because that is the factory original paint and primer, and the car's never been painted before. And the paint was uh, in very, very good shape to block sand out and use as a base, you might say. Like, let's say that uh, you strip it to bare metal and you put your epoxy primer on it. Like this truck right here has been stripped down to bare metal. And then we went ahead and put epoxy primer on it to seal it. Well, that's basically what the old factory original paint did. Now, this was a single stage paint at the time. I believe it was a, an acrylic enamel over lacquer primer. And if you kind of look uh, beyond the primer and the paint, you can see the metal is in very, very good shape. Uh, and it didn't need strip down. If you have a vehicle like this that you're restoring and it still has the original paint on it, then it's never been painted before, you might consider doing this to it instead of stripping it down to bare metal and wasting all your money and time. Like I mentioned, I went ahead and replaced the roof panel and we took that off our parts truck. Here, if you look, you can see the uh, top has been removed. This is our parts truck that we purchased for uh, rebuilding our two uh, trucks that we got in the shop. And so far, everything's worked out very, very well buying the parts truck because we needed that top. And uh, that top is very hard and rare to find in good condition. So uh, that paid off right there, getting that. And then, of course, uh, the painstaking job of doing all the body work that you see. You can see down here uh, when the owner brought the truck to me. What happened down here? Uh, they were loading it off the trailer. They had a trailer that had side rails on it when they were loading it off. Of course, the side of the trailer cut our door and then also caught the cab corner right there. And I went ahead and pulled that out. That was crushed in completely beyond recognition. And I went ahead and pulled that out with my... Uh, slide hammer and then I welded it all back together and fixed that up so I saved the owner a bunch of money. We still got to finish uh, block setting that. That's the last coat of Evercoat uh, polyester filler on there and uh, that'll be done. And then over here we got the same situation. Bodywork on the door. You can see where the two corners are. Uh, that had major rust repair in both corners. That's common on these old trucks so we went ahead and fixed that. We have uh, hand sanded, block sanded, and DA sanded this door down. You can see how nice and clean the uh, 
uh, the old paint comes right off when you use 80 grit sandpaper to do that with and that's ready for priming as well. You saw how we used the slide hammer. This was all crushed in in this area. This was crushed in and we took our slide hammer and used the old door handle to pull this all out and get it back in shape. So that worked out very well and that's all back in use now and the door handle fits on there great. And then of course uh, this cab corner, same thing. Had fucking dents going up and down it. And this is pretty common on these old trucks right here in this area. Uh, this is where the bed would uh, meet up with the cab on this side and then when people throw stuff in the bed they might accidentally hit the cab itself and put dings all the way across. There was a bunch of little dents starting here and then going all the way down. So it's better to go ahead and fill in each individual dent and then on the last uh, Bondo coat you want to swipe the whole thing and then block sand it out and what that does that levels all them little dings and dents out. So uh, that worked out really well. And uh, this is all I got left right here. These areas, I got to get rid of that red paint, bring it down to the primer, and uh, basically start taping it off and getting it ready for primer. As we look inside, you can see the inside of the truck's already been refinished, it's already been restored. Everything is new inside, including our gas tank. Uh, we've done all the gauges, we put our heater unit back in and Went ahead and installed all brand new air vents and air ducts and uh, we've repaired the floor in this car. We went ahead and uh, uh, fixed the rust using a fiberglass technique. Make sure you watch those videos. That's going to save you a lot of money. And uh, we've already got our door jams painted and done. So yeah, this truck has really, really come a long way from the day the owner dropped it off. Once we get the cab done, once we get in and primer, we'll go ahead and start tearing down the parts truck and ripping off the front end parts and taking his front end and the parts truck front end and getting the parts that we can use off both and making one. Uh, we'll get a sandblasted. We'll refinish everything that needs to be refinished black. Then we'll do the bodywork on the front fenders and the hood and repeat our process just like we did on this thing right here. Sorry about that. It's hot and I was sweating and my nose fucking itched. Uh, I don't know if anybody's ever been in that position where you're talking and sweat rolls down your face because it's hotter than hell and your nose starts to itch. So yes, sometimes you got to go like that to uh, get the motherfucking sweat off your nose because your fucking nose itches. So, so there's a nice little walk around of our 1966 Chevy truck in the process of being restored. I would say we're almost to the top of this mountain and getting ready to roll on down uh, and slide down nice and easy. Uh, this has been a major, major situation here just getting this cab done. I've been working on it solid three weeks and uh, it's really turning out nice. You know, it's a real fucking shame that you rely on other people to work with you and to start a job. And then once the job really gets involved, they're like rats in a fucking uh, hidden cave or in a hidden hole. They never come out until the job's completely done again. Uh, but that's all right. You know, that's my life and that's fucking usually how it is. And that's why my friend Pete is here alone. Because trying to count on somebody else to do something is nearly almost impossible and I don't rely on nobody for fucking nothing uh, because that's just the way that life is for me. If I want something done, I got to do it myself. <sighs> Motherfucking bitch. That's all I can say. Motherfucking bitch. I hate when people help me out and they start on the job and they never finish it and walk away. That's fucking bullshit, but that's fucking life. And that's why my friend Pete's here alone, working by himself, so I can get it done and say I did it. And I didn't have to rely or babysit you to fucking help. And then people wonder why it takes so long to restore a car like this. Why does it take so long to fucking do a car such as this? To do all the body work, all right? To paint the firewall, for instance, to sandblast the frame, rebuild the motors, uh, rebuild the heater box and 
all the front suspension. Why does it take so long when, you know, you're watching this bullshit fucking reality crap on TV and they do it in three or four half an hour episodes, all right? Let me tell you something about reality fucking TV. I'm going to tell you right now that reality TV is a fucking joke. I have made a reality TV show. It was called Tough Love Garage. I made three one-hour episodes, and it was a fucking joke, okay? It was fake to the hilt. The only thing that was real is that we worked our fucking asses off 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to get the work done that the production company wanted done. Uh, as far as doing all this work in three fucking hours, no, no, no. All right, you are not going to do a fucking car like this, not even in a month, okay? Not even six months. Now, maybe if this was the only fucking car here that I was working on and I worked on it seven days a fucking week, it might take six months to nine months to actually do the whole fucking thing, possibly a year, all right? So, as far as reality TV goes, fuck you. Anything that you see on TV, I don't give a fuck what it is. It could be National Geographic. It's fake. Okay? TV, television is fake. Anything you see on TV is fake. The news media makes up fake stories to sell to you. They bombard you with bullshit. All right? I know for a fact. I know for a fact that reality TV is a fucking joke. And uh, my friend Pete will be talking more intensely about reality TV over at SWRNC Pete, that's Cork, C-O-R-C, Cusserama Cafe. And my friend Pete's going to let it all hang out about reality TV and what it's all about. I have gotten in the last five years probably over 850 fucking phone calls from production companies, networks, this, that, and the other, and everything in between. But I don't want to go on it in here. I don't want to talk about that bullshit here because we're here to talk about restoration. We're here to DIY it, to do it ourselves, and to do it right. And having an attitude like my friend Pete has right now isn't going to get you far because it's just going to piss you off on a daily fucking basis and telling you, fuck this shit. So let me go, let me get my fucking attitude straightened out. Let me get all the fucking bad shit gone. Let me get this piece of shit in primer. That's going to take another two days to do that. Yeah, two more days to get this ready and get it in primer. And then we will be back on our 1966 Chevy truck. But you see, all right, you saw, and it is getting done. You saw the clown act at the beginning of this little uh, video set. You saw that. It was a fucking joke. I was drill sergeant. All right? Mr. Weekly Loser was fucking idiot. The clown factory was here. They didn't get nothing done. My friend Pete has done it all again by himself, doing it right, and getting her done like it should be. We'll see you later. Take it easy. And, uh, yeah, that's right. Anything that you're saying right now or you're thinking, sure, you keep that thought in mind and, uh, I'll keep my thoughts, and uh, that's fucking life. Take it easy. Goodbye. For now. I got work to do. I'm a busy fucking guy. Okay, Tony, that's enough of that fucking clown act bullshit, okay? But see, I'm clown what? No more clown, okay? If you want to be a clown, go buy a fucking mask and wear one. Can I? Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.